All right, hair loss. This is something that people think about a lot. You get kind of worried when you see too many hairs in your brush or after you shampoo your hair. All right, so we have three different kinds of hair. Lanugo. It is covering our body before birth. It's very fine and it's shed shortly after birth. Okay, then we have vellus, short, fine, non-pigmented hair that replaces lanugo hair. That's in places like this. Anywhere where when you look at, you don't actually like think about, oh, my face is hairy. But if you look really closely, you can see the short, fine, non-pigmented hair. Then you've got terminal, long, thick, pigmented hair, such as scalp and eyebrow hair. So the stuff we can see, okay? So the only difference between vellus and terminal is the size of the follicle. So if I have a follicle like that, and I have a follicle like that, I'm going to get a little tiny hair grow out of this, and I'm going to get a great big long hair grow out of this. Okay, so that's what determines the follicles are much smaller and they produce a smaller hair. Okay, lanugo before birth, vellus, and terminal. Okay. Average daily hair loss is 40 to 100 strands of hair per day. Now, if I lose 100 strands of hair, you know, I've got 100 strands like this. If you've got long hair, it seems like a lot. And that's why your parents complain about you clogging up the drain and everything. But that's the average. All right, alopecia, excessive hair loss. Basically, that word means bald, baldness, alopecia. Okay, so everything we are going to learn, we're going to build on this word. Okay, it can be um, caused by a fungal or bacterial infection or disease. But androgenetic alopecia is going to be your most common kind. All right, think of genetics. Did your dad go bald? Did your grandpa go bald? You know, are you going to go bald? The good news for women is we hardly ever go bald. This is more a guy problem, but um, the follicles shrink. So just like I drew before, instead of this being vellus hair and this being terminal hair, what happens is the terminal hair, the follicles keep shrinking. And as they shrink, you get smaller and smaller hairs. Now you have things like Rogaine that people put on their scalp. And what that does is that kind of reverses this and holds it in place so that the follicles don't keep shrinking. Now you can't go totally bald and not have any hair there and then decide to put Rogaine on. You have to be proactive while there's still hair there and you have to use it every day for the rest of your life. You cannot stop using it, okay? It's the most common form of alopecia. Um, male pattern baldness or thinning of hair in females. We're gonna get into that more. So remember, genetic baldness. All right, men, known as male pattern baldness, familiar horseshoe shaped fringe. You know, they end up with just the hair here, which is interesting because um, if you go in for hair transplant surgery, they will take, if you Google this on YouTube, I'm sure you can watch this, they will take and cut out a piece of scalp back here, sew that back together again, take the follicles out with the hair in them and implant them up here because this always keeps growing for whatever reason. Even if you go bald on top, you won't go bald back here. So they just take and move it up. It's really fascinating. They make little holes in the scalp and then insert the follicles in there. Okay. Um, it's common for men to go bald. So you're looking at, you know, what's the pattern? How are they going bald? Women, they get a generalized thinning. It can be pretty extreme. Um, we're looking at density for them. And it's rare for women to go bald. Okay, pattern is the shape and location. So are they starting to go bald here? Are they starting to go bald in their crown? And density, how much hair is left in that area? Again, you'll start seeing the hairs get smaller and smaller and smaller and your hairline is creeping back and then you go bald. Okay, women only, you only need to look at density. They won't get that horseshoe um, shaped fringe. 
Okay, so here is um, examples of how people go bald. They can go bald from the front back, or they can do that plus the crown. I just saw a picture of LeBron James um, playing basketball, and he's definitely got this kind of baldness. He's got a, uh, the big crown is, um, is going bald plus in the front. Okay, postpartum alopecia. If you've ever heard of someone that has postpartum depression, this word means after, post, birth. You can have baldness after birth. It's temporary. So basically what happens is, you know how you're supposed to lose those 40 to 100 hairs every day? During pregnancy, a hormone will kick in and you won't be losing very much. Then, at the, after they give birth, another hormone kicks in and everything they stored up for nine months falls out. It's very scary because it seems like it's not gonna stop and you are gonna go bald, but you're not. As long as you understand, you're just kind of making up for lost time and you will get back to normal. Okay, alopecia areata. You go bald in areas or spots, okay? This one, I've had a couple different clients that had it. It's an autoimmune disease, which means your body's attacking itself and you get a sudden loss of hair in rounder, regular patches, okay? Generally, um, it's in spots and they move around. Every time you cut their hair, it'll be in a different spot. It's really crazy. Now they're saying that you can have alopecia areata totalis, and that's the total loss of hair on the scalp, okay? I've never seen it with this in the middle. We just always said alopecia totalis, but remember if you see total, it means everything on your scalp went. If you see universalis, think how big the universe is. It's huge, okay? So if you have alopecia universalis, you have loss of hair over your whole body. And again, I've never seen it with that word, alopecia um, universalis. So um, Ryan Shazier for the um, Steelers, he has this alopecia universalis. No eyebrows, no eyelashes, no hair on the head, no hair on the arms, legs, etc. Okay. Alopecia prematura. Okay. You go bald really early. These are the kids that are in that are seniors in high school, and you're starting to see baldness happen. Okay. You also have the opposite of that, alopecia senilis. Okay, if you think about it, who goes senile? Older people. So you have um, hair loss that occurs in old age. You've got telogen effluvium. If you remember, antigen, catagen, telogen. Okay, the hair is supposed to shed during telogen, but it prematurely sheds. It happens too fast. All right? So it happens faster than it should normally. Traction or traumatic alopecia. This is from excessive pulling or twisting. Tight braids. Um, I had a client that was a waitress and she always pulled the front of her hair up here and put a bread in. She gave herself a big old uh, bald spot. Okay, it was easy to fix. We just had her move the bread back and it repaired itself, it, it came back, but putting something in the same place day in and day out is going to break your hair off, okay? Whether that's a tight hat, whether that's um, a scrunchie that's too tight, um, or again, like I said, braiding that's too tight. All right, treatment of androgenetic alopecia. All right, so there is a um, drug out there that's called finas finasteride. The brand name is Propecia. And this is a pill that you take by mouth. This one used to be on TV, you know, when they advertised those drugs on TV. And what it would say was that a pregnant, if a pregnant woman even touches one of these pills, there can be birth defects. Okay, so it's pretty nasty stuff but it's a pill that you can take every day to prevent hair loss, okay? 
Uh, again, we talked about Rogaine. That's another one that is a topical treatment, meaning it's a lotion that you rub into your scalp every day forever. Um, these are both FDA approved. You can go have surgery like I talked about and have the hair transplanted up to the front and top. You can go have wigs, toupees, hair additions, and hair weaving done. That's a great option. And there are cosmetic hair thickeners that make the hair that you have appear more because it coats the hair. All right, and look good, feel better. Um, I did look good, feel better for years. This is a great, great thing. This is to the American Cancer Society. If you know someone's going through cancer treatment, you tell them to call the American Cancer Society and say, I'm interested in look good, feel better. Back when I was doing it, which was probably more than 10 years ago now, they would get over $100 worth of free makeup. They would come to a class. I would go over how to apply the makeup with them. And we would talk about wig options and head covering options and just things like that. They were wonderful, wonderful classes. The people loved them. And you got all this, all this free uh, product. I don't know if it's the same anymore, but um, it's something to look into. All right. The degree of coarseness or fineness in the hair fiber is referred to as density. Two. The density is judged by the number of active hair follicles, follicles per square inch. Three, the ability to absorb moisture. Four, the ability to stretch and return. Five, the acid mantle lubricates the cuticle and reduces what? Six, a common cause of hair breakage is excessive stretching or grayness or whiteness of the scalp hair is known as an external parasite that burrows under the skin, causing red and watery vesicles. That's like little blisters and pus filled areas. Okay, so a parasite is something that lives on you without giving you anything in return. Okay, so an example, not this one, but would be head lice, pediculosis capitis. It's a little bug that lives on us and lives off of our blood, but doesn't benefit us in any way. An example of a vegetable parasite would be um, ringworm, tinea. It's a plant that lives on us and doesn't give us anything in return. So that's the definition of a parasite. Okay, excessive hair loss caused by a fungal or bacterial infection is a type of hair loss known as what? And the most common form of alopecia. Okay, number one, degree of coarseness or fineness, that is not density. Okay, that's texture. Density is judged by the number of active hair follicles. That's true. The ability to absorb moisture is porosity. The ability to stretch and return is elasticity. The acid mantle reduces friction when you're brushing. A common cause of breakage is traction. Remember, traction alopecia, pulling it too hard. Um, with a brett or something like that. Grayness or whiteness is known as canides. A parasite that burrows under the skin is an itch mite. The one that's on our scalp is pediculosis capitis, head lice. Excessive hair loss caused by fungal or bacterial infection is just plain old alopecia. The most common form of alopecia is the kind we get from our parents or androgenetic alopecia. All right, thanks very much.